Hi, you're with India Post Live, India's first online news conversation, Web TV. I'm Ashan Russell, and India Post Live is, of course, a forum for you to come in and participate. Use social media to get in touch with us. On Twitter, you can tweet out with hashtag India Post Live or use our Twitter handle at India Post Live. We have a Facebook page. Go ahead, like it. It's called India Post Live. You can post comments, pictures, anything that you want over there. Also, you can go to IndiaPostLive.com where you can watch this live right now. In case you're watching this later, there are a host of other uh, conversations that we've done about various issues under the sun so go ahead check those out and feel free to comment and in case you want to participate in any shows uh, we preview all our shows as well so you can come in and participate just send us a request and you can come in via Skype or Google Hangout so it's really up to you how to choose to participate but do participate and express your opinion the, the topic that we've chosen today is uh, one of the most interesting ones because the World Cup might be over but the impact that the World Cup has left behind is certainly being felt uh, the, it was the most social World Cup what do I mean by social social world cup well social media was really the winner of this world cup how well let's show you how the 2014 fifa world cup not only saw the maximum goals being scored ever but also set new records on various social media platforms it became the most talked about sporting event ever in history and is being hailed as the mobile world cup Tweets were sprinting at a mind-boggling 618,000 tweets per minute during the final game on 14th July. While the Brazil vs Germany game was the most talked about match with 35.6 million tweets, almost 3 million more than the final in total. Almost 672 million tweets were generated during the month-long tournament. So Germany may have lifted the FIFA World Cup but social media too was the winner in equal proportions. And to talk about this, uh, we have with us uh, Karan Vashishti, the social media expert. Thanks very much for coming in, Karan. And also a familiar face over here with uh, India Post Live, Chaitanya. And he's been talking a lot of football, but we'll be talking about the social media aspect of football today. Chaitanya Lekhwani, senior sports journalist. Also, we are joined uh, on uh, Google Hangout uh, by Nitin Bhatia. He's the director agency partner at Meltwater. Thanks very much for coming in, Nitin. And Nikhil Kuti joins us. He's a football enthusiast and has been busy catching up on lots of sleep after this World Cup. But but uh, Karan, I'll start with you. I mean, uh, 670 million tweets. The numbers are mind-boggling, but it was expected. I mean, this is the biggest sporting event in the world. Exactly. 672 billion tweets. Million. Billion. 672 billion, million. million tweets. And, I mean, we have seen that uh, every four years when Football World Cup comes, Everybody starts talking about the World Cup and it was expected that there will be a large number of you know, tweets and Facebook conversations about it. Mm -hmm. Because from the past four years, from 2010 to now 2014, a lot of people have shifted to social media. But the kind of boom it had, like uh, if we see Oscars 2014, it had somewhere close to 17 million tweets. And Oscars is like one of the biggest thing and coming on to this World Cup, it's like almost almost like 60 folds of that it it was something very unexpected in the social media world but that's how people are going these days all right in fact i'll just ask my producer to put a graphic out out there of uh, when the world cup final was happening uh, where were the most tweets being generated and that gives us a very interesting idea as to uh, so you can see over there on your screens uh, twitter release a heat, this is a heat map uh, of the activity during the final and you can see uh, even India has lit up Chaitanya, in India has lit up rather brightly. I mean, we might not have a team in there, a do dog in the fight, but we certainly were excited about it. Imagine when we do have a dog in the fight, <laughs> what will happen then? But yeah, obviously because we, the, India as a country also is a very sport loving country yeah. and it just happens to be that in the past five odd years or so, our, the, the 20 to 20 18 to 26 demographic is really caught on to football hmm. and we've seen that with I've been to screenings at places where I've seen 500 600 odd people just show up in Manchester United jerseys so on and so forth for Arsenal and Liverpool and for and for football in general so even during this World Cup if people because of the late timingness of the India matches if they could not meet they made sure they were present on each other's walls yeah. or statuses or tweets and there were favoritings and there was retweeting so it was it was a good exercise which could be done in spite of you not being together on a place to watch a game you can actually stay connected and exchange opinions so that and the fact that social media is doing us a favor 
by actually making it so the making the reach brilliantly so absolutely i mean in fact uh, nitin uh, to, just to, uh, to take off from where chaitanya was pointing to the fact that uh, i mean still i mean i watch the friends with uh, final with my friends and things like that but in case you don't have friends or in case you have friends away from you the social media touch was there to get you connected to talk about the same thing to share that same excitement wasn't it Pretty much true. Uh, of course, I'll share some personal experience first of all. It's a very interesting insight that uh, on a World Cup final, which was happening on an odd hour, all the uh, you know restaurants and uh, things things were off. So I remember I was actually on Twitter constantly tweeting and talking to my friends or, and on Facebook as well. But on the other hand, very interesting point which uh, uh, you all raised was this that uh, the participation of India. I'll be. Um, giving you some figures, specifically being a monitoring agency, we found out that 6% of uh, the entire tweets which basically happened also happened from India out of the, and it was among the top 10 countries which tweeted the most or uh, participated the most in social media as far as FIFA World Cup is concerned. All right, interesting point to make over there. Nikhil, uh, you must be somebody who might have uh, tweeted out, at least done a few Facebook pages, uh, Facebook posts uh, talking about the results of the World Cup. But it was a common trend across the board for the past one month, even uh, over here in India, everybody was talking just football. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not a person who, who's on Twitter, but I know that Facebook was littered with, uh, with uh, comments, even people who had never kicked a football before in their life <laughs> seem to now have football you know out of the years and stuff i mean it, it's interesting to watch watch people suddenly become a uh, zero football experts having never seen a match before <laughs> all right fair enough and that, 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 that's an interesting point was it about acceptability was it about looking cool was it about uh, i mean I, I might not have ever seen the world cup but this year okay well, my friends are talking about it and so in my social space where i mean it's become another identity and you have to propagate that identity was it that happening with this exactly more of it was about being cool like if you ask today who was the player luis suarez bit nobody would know but that day, everybody was like so sympathetic with that player. <laughs> I mean, chill and easy. Everybody was like, oh my God, he was my favorite player and stuff like that. Hmm. Even if you even if you ask half of the players who hit the goal in the final, most of the people do not know. Because whom do they know from Germany team? It's Klose because he <laughs> was the one he was the one who made a record in this World Cup by scoring the maximum number of goals. In fact, most of the, um, some of my friends, they used this thing, I mean, not the used, but yeah, they watched the matches, they were just tweeting the scores using the hashtags, those, those were popular, to just gain, you know, more number of followers. And, you know, to stay, uh, like, discussing it in their office, it was like something, yes, I know about football, and it was something cool, <laughs> that has always been. This time, yeah, I mean, Generally, was, would you agree? I mean, it was also a little bit. I mean, I, I mean, I personally love football. I've been watching it since '94, since uh, the the uh, the US. No, it's a 19, uh, 1990 was US. '94 was US only. '90 '90 was Italy. Yeah, '90 yeah, '90 yeah, yeah. was Italy. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, so the fact is that I mean, it was a, a cool factor. So if I, I I didn't really follow football, then this was my entry point into that social club. Yeah, I I I remember a, a screenshot of uh, of one of my friends who sent uh, me a message through in a screenshot which said Karan Johar had tweeted that I have finally given up I'm I'm a wannabe because I'm watching football because it's cool mm. I think that kind of sums up what we're trying to do is because uh, you show up at work or you show up somewhere else and people are telling you at the, at this this that that <laughs> this is that that they're giving you gyan suddenly so many <laughs> armchair pundits have risen up from Facebook and Twitter it's not <laughs> even funny but then it's nice you can you but can oh, actually uh, I mean, was it the most of it, oh, how much of it of original content did you see how much of borrowed content from did you see from oh, I, after Brazil versus Germany I don't think there was any original <laughs> content it was just one shared <laughs> to the other because you could see posts later but coming back to the point of the fact that Sure, people do get a lot, you know, that thing to watch football or right. that thing to stay in, that trend gets it. But at the same time, you, uh, it's, it's, it's a good, good platform to actually exchange opinions re regardless of good or bad. Because you know that if you post something on uh, a social forum, you will be corrected or you will be slapped. <laughs> You uh, will be brought down to right, ground, and, 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 and it's never too late to learn as well. Sure, it's it? never too late to learn. That's that's always. All right, right. we'll we we'll put a little bit of a graphic together for you all, so that you can see what were the most important uh, milestones as far as social media was concerned with this World Cup. So uh, let's play that out, Ronnie. 
So this was, uh, of course, uh, the famous Lukas Luke, Podolsky and uh, Schweinsteiger picture. Uh, sorry, not picture, selfie. And this was uh, retweeted 88,620 times and earned uh, 78,169 favorites. Nike received 3 million, uh, 300, sorry, 3 million, yes, 300, 3 million 72,000 mentions on Twitter. And Adidas got 1,617,000, uh, about that much. 88 million Facebook users provided 280 million interactions, which consists of likes, comments, and posts. During the final game, this took the record from the 2013 Super Bowl's hands, where 245 million interactions were recorded. And Facebook has seen over 3 billion interactions from 350 million willing participants. The US contributed the most to the cause, followed by Brazil, Argentina, Germany, and Indonesia in the turn. Indonesia, surprised about Indonesia, Chetan? Yeah. I did not expect that. <laughs> I, was, I was actually expecting India's name to be there somewhere. <laughs> so was I. All right. And Nike Football discovered 6.2 million new followers across various social platforms, which they hope to enlarge by releasing the Nike Football app. All right. So, Nitin, I mean, uh, given what Nike has uh, gotten out of this World Cup, 6.7 million, uh, I mean, uh, followers, uh, a co combination from Twitter friend, Twitter followers to Facebook friends. But, uh, I mean, the numbers are mind-boggling for any company, and this was such a big brand to be associated with. If I'm Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Nike was the principal sponsor. In fact, Adidas was the sponsor for this World Cup. So, Nike really got away as far as, and uh, got the benefit of social media on this one. Yeah, in fact, I think so. Uh, you know, um, the campaigns which basically were run by Nike were very, very intelligent that way. Uh, but I also feel that, you know, we should have got some analysis on All In, which was the campaign which was done by Adidas. Mm -hmm. And it, it was very, very successful. In fact, I wanted to share a couple of statistics which I did on uh, India's uh, scenario because, uh, you know, I was focusing, thinking that, you know, India's participation was so huge. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you allow me, I can actually sure, share sure, it go with ahead. you. So is it uh, something which I just need to do through a screen share, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just give me one second. So uh, just to quickly highlight a couple of things because uh, this was what I was talking about, uh, the analysis earlier. This is uh, the top 10 countries on mm -hmm. the last two days of... All right, we seem to have uh, lost that connection with Nitin. We'll try to re-establish it. But uh, Nikhil, coming to you, uh, the fact that, uh, I mean, you pointed in a very interesting direction, but uh, in terms of brands, do you think the bigger brands really got noticed and uh, it's worth the investment for a big brand to make in a World Cup because there are millions and billions of people literally watching you? Um, <clears throat> as for me, Adrian, if you really want to invest in the World Cup, I mean, FIFA is the only governing body that can change the laws mm -hmm. in your country. So, I mean, things like beer not being not being served yeah. before in, in the stadiums. Only you know what this is. I need to have my beer served. Beer is magically served by FIFA in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, beats by Dre. Banned because Sony is the principal partner. So hence, Sony is only here. Nikhil, Nikhil, I'll just stop you for a minute because you're having a bit of a difficulty as far as your connection is concerned. We'll just try to re-establish that, just sort that out and uh, get your views back in. But uh, Chaitanya, just taking off from where Nitin, uh, what Nitin was talking about, I mean, the big brands really got their money's worth. And yeah, Nike Adidas, I think, smart I think Adidas came out the winner simply for the fact that the two, Nike, as he said, played a very safe game by using their own signed athletes that they have personally signed. They, Adidas came out the biggest winner because Germany and Argentina uh, are both sponsored by Adidas in shirt, hmm. shirt sales. Muller and Messi both personally signed Adidas players. So it's a win-win situation right there. Hmm. So even though Nike might have got 6 million new followers or 6 million new customers which it can target through the World Cup, I think the bigger game has actually been won by Adidas and, and uh, uh, Nike tried their best. I, Personally, from a viewer's point of view, I saw more of Nike than I saw of Adidas. Mm. I saw more of Beats by Dr. Dre than I did of Adidas. Mm. Because at the same point, Adidas really don't need to... When you're the principal sponsors of World Cup and you, you kind of hold the keys to the gravy train, I don't think you need to do anything more than just show up at the tournament. And that's what Adidas did and how in 
Yeah, fact. certainly. But they had to pay a bomb for that also. Yeah. Nike might have spent all 180, their entire... 180 on million, uh, to be precise, was what Adidas paid to FIFA to be partners with the World Cup in 2014. So those are mind-boggling numbers. Yeah. But the returns are also then that high in yeah. terms of brand interaction. Nizam, you were sharing some uh, uh, figures and facts with us. Uh, so go ahead and try, to, uh, try that again. All right. Uh, we'll try to... Uh, um, not sure whether Nitin can hear me right now. Uh, we'll try to establish that connection again. But uh, if you talk about uh, the kind of uh, consistency, do you think this consistency would last in terms of people's interest in football or would it just move on to something else, the next big thing? The next big thing, yes, it will. Uh, we will know that in another, another one week this thing is coming. Commonwealth Games is coming. It is also a 10 to 13 day long event. So we'll see if it's just about talking about, you know, FIFA because it's cool or maybe people are genuinely getting interested in sports or something like that. But I think people will rise up once again in 2018 Russia World Cup. Till that it will be general talking about various day-to-day -day activities or whatever, maybe new movies or something like that. Because most of the people, they are only interested in FIFA just because it is cool. It is one of the biggest What sets apart the Football World Cup from everything else? I mean, you, you have the same players playing day to, on day in various you clubs. To, yeah, the, for me, the simple, sim, simple fact being, I care as much as I care about Brazil as about every other country in the world. Till the time India is not participating <laughs> yeah. in the World Cup. Yeah. Every country is my favorite country. I <laughs> change colors every day. No, no one as a person can say anything to anyone saying, why are you supporting Germany? Why not Brazil? I saw you in a Brazil jersey yesterday. Does not matter. Everyone gets that license then that they keep yearning for throughout throughout these years to actually go on and be, oh, I'm watching football. You, you, you never knew. And before the World Cup, I think the Euros 2016 or even closer, the Premier League season, the start of the Premier League season will also see this interest amalgamate through but there. Premier League happens every every year and I mean yeah. we've not seen we've not seen so many users, you know, talking about Premier League. Even I have a group about Premier League. It, it started in 2011. We had we started with around 23 users. Until date we have 92 users out of which hardly 10 to 15 are active. Otherwise nobody talks about football all year round. I mean only those who are very enthusiastic about football. I'm, I'm only only to, those people talk to, about that. Uh, to argue that I would like to say that I was working in a project before called Told Football and it gathered 200,000 followers in six months because of the fact that we were doing an in-depth. So I think what your point basically is that people might not be active throughout the Premier League, but you soon, but you might just see these people sticking on just yeah. a little bit more yeah. throughout the World Cup. The new kids come out, people exactly. start wearing them and then sharing them and then so on. And yeah, so, so uh, but Nikhil, putting the same question to you, do you think that this would uh, this momentum that f the FIFA World Cup has generated would be carried through in football in various forms, be it the Champions League, the EPL, Serie A, Bundesliga, any of them? No, I, I honestly don't think it's going to be carried forward. I, I think, I think, in all honesty, the reason the World Cup does so well because it, of its name itself. It's the world. It's not just Europe. It's not just Asia. It's not just uh, the Americas. It's basically the world. Hence, I believe that it does a lot better. Yes, your other leagues have following, but the world sort of unites for this one sort of occasion. All right, uh, but Nitin, uh, have you managed to get that graphic up or do we let that be and you can just talk us through it? As basically, I was uh, looking at this uh, very interesting of following the conversation from Eric Blair, uh, where I could not uh, hear you all. Yeah. But uh, uh, one thing is, is that, you know, one of the key, key reasons for this huge engagement was uh, multiple platforms through which uh, people could actually watch FIFA this time. So, uh, of course, you've heard that, you know, Bollywood celebrities coming in like John O'Brien uh, connecting with Sony 6 and uh, Cafe Rio, the program which they organized. So, I, and the hashtag Cafe Rio itself was a very huge uh, success, initially for the negative reasons because of uh, <laughs> the uh, complaints about the and, uh, and wow. uh, other anchors coming in who were not really aware of what football is all about. Mm. But <laughs> later on, uh, later on, it really picked up well. And apart from this, uh, uh, you could also uh, realize that there were a lot of apps which were showing uh, the World Cup on mobile. And that was one of the major reasons why the engagement on social media was very, very high. Because the availability of the content on FIFA was uh, available in multiple um, user interfaces. Hmm. 
that's an interesting point. I mean, just in terms of content, there was a lot that was out and people were generating a lot more. I mean, Chaitanya, what would be your favorite memory from this World Cup in terms of a meme or something like that? Oh, I cannot say that on <laughs> uh, uh, national airspace. But then also from the fact that, yeah, what, what helped us throughout people in social media was the fact that uh, you suddenly have people actually taking note and sitting up and googling stuff and actually reading it and following it through mm. so you have that you have that awareness that yeah you you're not just sitting like a zombie and watching the game on the screen that's being flashed at you people are actually aware enough to know as i said that if you post something which is not valid which is not uh, which is not right you will be brought to ground <laughs> so that's why people are getting more aware they're second guessing themselves they're reading up which is which is in turn good for themselves and for everyone around them mm. because no one no one wants to li listen to a prick who doesn't know the first thing about football <laughs> all right let's be honest the, yeah the, the, that's the i think the ultimate show that it, people decided not to be beep uh, yeah. about uh, know yeah. nothing about football they've made an effort to find out about football and in the end football was the winner but so did everybody else who enjoyed the football on that note we'll wrap it up thanks very much nitin and nikhil for coming in and sharing your perspective also it was a pleasure having the both of you chaitanya and karan on our show over here today thanks so much well uh, that's it on a little presentation on fifa and social media so social media is the big winner you can use social media to express your opinion tweet out to us use facebook to get in touch with us or go to indiaforcelife.com and tell us what you think thanks so much for watching